and it's Wednesday morning in the wood shop. Thank goodness it's not Monday morning. The coffee tastes is good though. Today I'm working again on my mini mating nukes. These are going to take a bit of work. It's not rocket science, but it's a lot of small pieces, a lot of fussing around. And uh, so I actually I just glued one up. It's a bit of an involved glue up, using a lot of clamps. And I don't have an unlimited supply of clamps, so this may take me a few days to get these glued and let the glue set. As I usually do, Magic Type Bond 3 waterproof food safe glue. This is all 3 8 plywood being used here. All the plywood is flush with the bottom of the nukes. This box is cut uh, three quarters of an inch deeper than a medium box. So my bottom board is just simply a flat piece of plywood instead of plywood plus shim and everything adding complexity. Because this started out as a deep and I just cut it down to what I needed. What I've done here is I've cut three different parts. I've got a center divider that goes across the box. The frames will sit this direction, the same direction they normally do, but the frames will be half as wide, minus a little. Then to divide each end, I've run another piece of 3 8 plywood from the end to the center on both sides. Then in order to create a frame rest I've added yet another smaller piece of 3 8 plywood to each side of these. So now I have a nice 3 8 frame rest here to match the one on this side. So once this glue sets up I, should, I can take the clamps off and I should have a fairly complete little mating nuke then all it really needs is a bottom the entrance holes drilled I'm going to have to make a cover of some kind I have some ideas about what I'm going to do there and uh, then I have to build all those frames that's going to be a bit of work to make all those little frames so I'll show you what I'm doing here before I take this setup down what I've got here is I've cut these top bars and bottom bars down to fit my mating nukes. I have yet to mill the newly cut end to be like the other end so that my end bars will fit, but that's a challenge yet to be overcome. So how I'm cutting these is I've got my stop block here against my fence. Using both a miter guide and a fence is prohibited because your offcut gets stuck between the fence and the blade and it'll twist and it'll kick back and it'll go off like an arrow. Very very dangerous. So what you do is you put a stop block on your fence to register your workpiece against and then you run through the saw. So by the time I get my piece here it's free floating in here. There's nothing holding it. There's no way for it to bind in between the blade and the fence. So I just hold it with my fingers. I try to hold it far enough out. The red throat plate is there for a reason. You shouldn't ever pass your fingers over the throat plate. So I can hold this here. My fingers don't go over the throat plate. Make my cut. I'll make my cut. Pull that workpiece away a little before I back out. I don't want to slide that back over there because I could hit that blade and cause a problem. So that's what I was doing here. I've cut a hundred of my full-sized frame top and bottom bars. So now I have 200 pieces here that will be the 200 small frames that go into my mating nukes. Now I have to set up and mill the freshly cut end. Okay, we've got the dado blade in here. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to cut this groove here on the side. That's where the, the end bar comes up like this. So I'm going to cut this groove and this groove. And that's actually a dado. Ask me about the difference sometime. 
Remember I said that you cannot run the miter gauge and the fence at the same time for a through cut like I was doing where you actually end up with an off cut. You can't do that but this is not a through cut so you can use both the miter gauge and the fence at the same time because there's no off cut to get trapped. I didn't even edit that, that's my very first setup. That fits perfectly. But I'm, I have to make that next cut here, so that'll go right down in there. Wow. That's a one take wonder. I just guessed at that setup. There's my factory end, and there's my homemade end. I'll just check this again for fit. <laughs> that could not be better. That's nice. I'm trying to do this in as few setups as possible because I've got one, two, three, four different setups to do here. My next setup is simply to raise the blade and cut this. This is uh, going to be a dado cut again, but it's a little bit taller than this one. This one's shallow, this one's a little deeper. So I'm going to set that up, but all I have to do is raise the blade. The distance from here to here is always the same. And uh, then we'll cut those again. Check a random one again. That fitment is absolutely perfect. For the next cut, I want to cut this bevel here. Now what I have to do to cut that bevel is I need to make my dado blade wider. So it has to be at least this wide, which is, oh, I better go with a three quarter inch dado blade. Then I need to tilt it to get this angle here. Unless I had a jig that would tilt the workpiece, but I don't care to take the time to do that. So I'm going to try the, the tilt the dado blade idea. Okay, I'm set up to cut this bevel on here. As George Von Driska would say, let me show you what's going on here. I have put a three quarter inch dado set in here and I have tilted that dado blade to 10.75 degrees. And you may ask, how did I determine that it was 10.75 degrees? Let me show you. This is a nifty little deal. It's called a tilt box. It's not going to work just holding it here. But what I did was I zeroed it out of my table here and then I set it on my bevel and it showed me that that bevel was 10.75 degrees. So then I could take it over. It's got magnets. It's got rare earth magnets in three sides. I could stick it to the side of my dado blade turn the tilting mechanism and I dialed that right into 10.75 degrees. I love that little deal. It's called a Tilt Box 2 Beal Tool Company. I know they're sold under many different names. Highly recommended. One thing I didn't mention is I have an auxiliary fence on here. It's just an MDF box that I built some time ago. It fits nice and snugly on the fence. It's not going to come off of there. And the dado blade is uh, buried in that. So that means that uh, when I'm cutting a rabbit, a rabbit is a dado that goes to the end of a piece like this. That's a rabbit. 
and that's a dado. The dado is captive in the piece. All right. So when you cut a rabbit, you bury it in here so that the dado blade cuts all the way to the end of the workpiece. All right, I think I have one more cut I want to make on these. They have a nice little bevel on the end. I like that. I'm not sure it's necessary. It looks very nice instead of that square end. That to me looks like a 45 degree. So basically what I need to do is continue tilting my blade up to 45 and then run these through twice. Okay, that takes care of the top bars. One thing I learned, besides how much work this is, I knew it would be a lot of work, but one thing I learned was if I were to do this again, so the last two cuts I would do in opposite order. So I'd do this bevel cut, and then I would do this bevel cut. And that is because there is no way, short of building a jig, there is no way to back up this cut with uh, just a straight miter gauge fence kind of a deal. So when you're running this through the saw this way, this is an unsupported cut and it tends to tear out. Some tore out far worse than others. None of them tore out really, really bad, but uh, if, if you did this cut first, any tear out would be limited to whatever you're gonna cut off in the next cut. Top bars are done. Now we change our setup slightly. I keep the same dado blade in there. Uh, I'll use my sacrificial fence and I'll just set the depth and the uh, shoulder depth here on the table so I can put my throat plate back in and we'll just run those through each side and cut those little little rabbits at the end. Got my tilt box here again just so that I can check the vertical alignment of this blade, make sure it's bang on enough for me. Zero the table, set it to the blade, and we are 1.2 degrees, 1.4 degrees off. 0.6. Zero, zero, zero. That's what you want to see. Tighten that down nice. And now that blade is vertical to two decimal places.